This demo is on Spanitry with loop detection. The main reason to use loop detection is when you have a hub downstream that is dropping BPDUs. Since Spanitry uses BPDUs to detect layer two loops, there is a chance that Spanitry will not detect the loop. In this scenario, another mechanism is needed to detect layer two loops. For this, loop detection in strict mode is used on a per port basis. From the hub perspective, since the loop detection packet looks like a normal layer two packet, the hub forwards the packet and the switch is able to detect and block the layer two loop. In my setup, I have two main switches, one in the MDF, one in the IDF. I have a Netgear hub here and a Milan switch here. I'm gonna introduce four different loops. Here are loop one, two, three, and four, and we'll see how the network reacts. So let me review my configurations. I'm currently running BPDU guard on all the ports, port one through four, and I have spanning tree disabled on port 12 on the IDF switch. And the main reason again is because the fiber between the IDF and MDF is very unstable. I don't want that instability to affect my spanning tree domain. So let's look at the interfaces. And you would see here that port three and port four are up, and so is port 12. I don't have any of the loops enabled right now. So let's start, I'm gonna create loop number three on the Milan. Okay. Port four went into disabled state. Right here. Port three is still forwarding. Let me introduce uh, loop number one. And port one went into the error disable port one and port two. Okay, port three is still up. That is my link to the, to the Netgear hub here. So I'm gonna connect loop number two. And what you'll notice here that port three does not go into disable state. So right now we have a loop. And the problem is that this net gear is dropping the BPDU package. So the switch here does not know that there's actually a loop happening. There you go, my CPU, it's starting to spike. And they CPU is spiking. So what I need to do is basically enable loop detection on my ports. And again, I'm not gonna enable it on port 12 since that's my uplink port. And as soon as I enabled it, you can see that port three went into error disable state. So now I have all four ports in error disable state. Now by default, once the port is in error disable state, the port will stay down. I mean, you can manipulate that. You can have the port come back up after a certain amount of time, but the default state of the switch is to keep the ports that are in error disable state down. Now you can change that. You can have a recovery of, let's say, let's say what the cause is first. Let's say the cause is I had BPDU guard and I also had a cause of loop detection. So if I show you here, I have two of these error disable recovery clauses. Okay, loop detection and BPDU guard. And I can have a recovery interval of anything more than 10 seconds. So you don't really want the ports to be coming up and down every 10 seconds. So one recommendation is to keep the number high, give you enough time to narrow down which ports were in loop and fixing that problem. 
So, I mean, a good number would probably be, let's say, an hour. 3600 seconds. So these ports will come up by themselves in about an hour. Again, there are the configs. Here's the CPU, back down to 